This is Captain Ross with 3B's Captain School, and this video is on tides and is part of our navigation video series. Navigation, the art and science of directing the movements of a vessel safely, confidently, and efficiently from one location to another. In this video, we're going to go over tides. We're going to define terms related to tides and currents, state, tidal and current information publications, and state how to calculate the tide for a given location. All right, let's go over the tidal definitions. So the first is tide. It's important that you remember tide, the term tide refers to the vertical rise and fall of tidally influenced water. So it's how high or low the water is vertically. Current is the correct term to use for the horizontal flow of water. The tidal range is the measured difference between high and low. So if low tide was say two feet and high tide was seven feet, the tidal range would be five feet. That's the difference between high and low. The term spring tide is a time when the sun and moon are lined up to give us the greatest tidal range. So you'll have the lower low tides and the really high high tides. And then neap tide is when the sun and moon are aligned so we have the least amount of tidal range. So you'll have higher lows and lower highs. It'll be the least amount of range. Stand is a term we used to reference the time between tides where there's no apparent vertical movement of water. So the water doesn't appear to be moving up or down. It's not getting higher or lower. Slack is a term we use and it's a time between tides when there's no apparent horizontal movement of water. So you don't see the water, like if you're standing on, the, on an inlet um, watching the water come in, you, you don't see that movement of water at slack. So then we have mean lower low water. And that's the average height of the lower of the two low waters at a given place. So if you look at a graph of the tides, which we will here in a minute, there's usually two highs and two lows, which is known as diurnal. And the two lows, one is usually lower than the other. So mean lower low water is the mean or the middle of the um, lower low tides for a given period of time. That's a, <clears throat> what we use on charts for soundings. Soundings are all done in mean lower low water. So let's go to flood. That's the current coming towards land. Ebb is the current going out from land. Mean high water is the average height of all high tides. And it's the height, it's, it's the water level they use when they're measuring the height of a bridge or a lighthouse or tower or something. They measure it from mean high water. All right, publications. So all NOAA tide and tidal current predictions for locations around the U.S. are available in electronic form online. NOAA eliminated paper publications of the annual tide tables and the tidal current tables in 2020. You can find these tidal predictions at this website I have here, or if you just Google NOAA tides and currents or NOAA tides, you can find the website pretty easily. Let's go ahead and go to this website now. Pull this down. So this is what NOAA's website looks like when you go to their tide and currents site. It's the NOAA tide predictions. Let's pick a, an area so you can see all the states are listed here that have coastlines. We're going to go to North Carolina and then we're going to have all these different tidal areas that we can get the tide from. <clears throat> Some are harmonic or have an actual station there and then others like this Kitty Hawk Ocean are subordinate so there's not an actual station there measuring the tide but they use a formula to determine from the closest actual station to this location what the tide will be there then um, let's go to we can look through all the different areas here in North Carolina I'm actually getting ready to take a trip so I need to find the new river, make sure I'm going to have some water there. 
and I take a trip in a few days. So let's go to New River Inlet. You can see in my cursor right here. I'm going to click that. All right, now we're going to get a title graph. So it's got the dates here. Today is May 12th, and this is at 12 a.m. We had a high tide, and then here we had a low tide at uh, 8.12, it looks like. Here's our current time right here, this green line. So it shows, if I put my cursor on there, we're at 2.53 feet above mean lower low. And that mean lower low is this zero zero line right here. So as you can see, none of the tide predictions for the next few days for New River are gonna be below that mean lower low mark. And if you can look, I'm trying to point without getting my cursor on top of it, but that first low tide is at point 11. The second one's at point 21. This next tide's at point 07. And then this fourth tide visible in this graph is point 21. So you can see where there's two of those that are lower than the other two. So that's where they would get that mean lower low from. You can expand the, expand the range from two dates here. Um, our units are feet. Here's our time zone that we're using. The datum is mean lower low, either 12 or 24 o'clock. Let's see, we want to shift forward a day. So now we've got from the 14th to the 15th. And then it stops here on the 16th. Here's the wet, the high and low actual heights um, in like a table format instead of a graph. I like this graph though. I can see exactly where I'm at. And you can see we're not on today. If I go back a day, back a day, green line represents the time we're at right now and the tide we're at right now. And that's how we do title predictions now. There's also quite a few apps that you can get for your iPad or phone. I have a couple on my phone that I like to use, but before I take a trip, I always check on this NOAA site. This concludes our video on tides and our navigation video series. Please visit our YouTube channel for other videos.